Movies are perhaps the most delicate of all the major art forms, where a single edit can change the context of an entire scene, or in extreme cases, even the whole damn movie. Directors often face agonizingly tough choices when shaping a movie in the editing room, where one bad decision can put a dent in a film's box office, harm its critical reception, and even derail its potential staying power forevermore. Thankfully, these 10 movies were all rescued from possible ruin thanks to one incredibly shrewd cut. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 movies saved by one single cut. Number 10. Cutting the Xenomorph Crab Walk Alien Ridley Scott's Alien is a masterpiece of subtle slow burn suspense, and one of its key triumphs is Scott's decision to rarely show the xenomorph creature clearly to the audience. Typically, the alien is bathed in shadow, and a concerted effort is made never to depict it in full profile, where it would be more obviously distinguishable as a man in a suit. Scott sensibly made one crucial cut then during Lambert's death scene, which originally contained a lengthy shot where the xenomorph crab walks towards her on all fours before standing up in a distinctly humanoid fashion. The unintentionally hilarious moment would have instantly sucked the tension out of not only the scene, but perhaps the rest of the movie, morphing Alien from a gut-wrenching horror into an accidental comedy. This honestly might be one of the shrewdest directorial calls of Scott's entire career. Number 9. Cutting Sloane's Sexist Dialogue – Ferris Bueller's Day Off Ferris Bueller's Day Off is such a relentlessly charming movie that it's tough to consider the film was ever at risk of not finding an audience, but test screenings indicated one specific moment that very nearly tanked the entire thing. According to former Paramount VP Lindsay Doran, there was originally a brief exchange after the parade sequence where Sloane says, a girl can always bail out and have a baby and get some guy to support her, while suggesting that men have it much harder than women in life. This resulted in the film receiving incredibly low test scores from young female viewers, who noted their particular dislike for the single line in the feedback cards. Though producer Tom Jacobson insists the line was meant to be an ironic criticism of that perspective rather than an endorsement of it, it certainly didn't hit with viewers the way the filmmakers intended, and so the decision was made to snip it. As a result, young female test scores skyrocketed approximately 40 points, which Doran says is one of the most dramatic test screening improvements she's ever seen. And it all came down to what was a single dud line of dialogue. Number 8. Cutting Sergeant Candy – Terminator 3 – Rise of the Machines Though few would profess the third Terminator film to stand tall among its predecessors, it is the sturdiest of all the post-T2 sequels, even if many felt that it leaned too far into farce with its sometimes cringeworthy humour. Director Jonathan Mosto at least had the good sense to cut a scene which would have undeniably tipped the balance too far in the realm of goofiness. The scene in question was basically written to explain why the T-800 has an implausible Austrian accent, playing as a commercial for Cyber Research Systems' line of cyborgs. We see one of the T-800s running on a treadmill before it introduces itself as Sergeant William Candy, complete with a stereotypical Southern American accent, the implication being that this is the likeness of the real person on whom the machine line is based. When one of the CRS executives suggests the voice wouldn't work, one of his underlings replies, we can fix it, in a familiar Austrian accent that was very clearly dubbed over by Schwarzenegger himself. Though it does explain how the T-800 ended up with Arnie's inexplicable accent, the scene feels more like it belongs in Starship Troopers than a Terminator movie, and would have created major tonal whiplash from which the film would have never recovered. Number 7. Cutting the Darker Ending – American History X American History X is a masterful drama starring Edward Norton as Derek Vineyard, a rehabilitated neo-Nazi who attempts to prevent his brother Danny from following his own hateful path. Though you'd never really know it from watching the film itself, which netted Norton a Best Actor Oscar nomination, it went through post-production hell as director Tony Kaye feuded with both the studio and Norton over the final cut of the movie, even eventually disowning it. While such stories are typically sympathetic to the filmmaker, in this case it actually sounds like New Line and Norton had a better vision for what the film needed to be, considering that Kaye originally included an added sting in its already bleak ending. The theatrical 
cut ends with Danny being shot dead at school and Derek cradling his corpse. But Kay's first cut went beyond this to show Derek shaving his head, pulling out a pistol and smirking to himself, implying that he's returned to his racist ways. This ending would have hugely undermined Derek's character growth and the tragedy of his arc, leaning back on the lazy, edgy twist ending. Number 6. Cutting Evil Bill's Woman Beating – Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey is a daring and ambitious sequel in many ways, but almost took things too far once evil robot doppelgangers of Bill and Ted arrive on the scene. The synthetic twosome eventually confront Bill's former stepmother Missy, at which point Bill knocks her out by blowing in her face with what Ted calls evil breath. If this scene seems a little strange, that's because it received a sneaky re-edit during post-production. Originally, Bill actually punched Missy in the face to knock her out, but director Pete Hewitt quite rightly realized that nobody wanted to see a woman get punched out in a Bill and Ted movie. Quite ingeniously, Hewitt looked over the raw footage and noticed that Alex Winter playfully blew some air in Missy's face before she collapsed. So Hewitt simply cut the punch out and had Reeves dub over the line, Whoa, evil breath. Thankfully, the film is already bonkers enough by this point that two evil robot imposters having evil breath powers out of nowhere seemed totally on brand. Number 5. Cutting Miranda's Vulnerability – The Devil Wears Prada the Devil Wears Prada is a ludicrously entertaining comedy remembered largely for Meryl Streep's towering Oscar-nominated performance as Takes No Prisoners magazine editor Miranda Priestley. Yet the entire tenor of the film would have been irrevocably changed had director David Frankel included a brief deleted beat from the gala scene, where Miranda's husband drunkenly belittles Elias Clark chairman Irv Ravitz. This could naturally have devastating ramifications for Miranda's career, but her co-assistant Andy quickly diffuses the situation by distracting Rabbits with a question. We then cut back to Miranda, who mouths a silent thank you to Andy. It's an interesting moment, albeit one that annihilates the film's delicate tonal balance. It feels out of character for the icy Miranda to suddenly treat Andy with such gratitude at this point in the film, and would have had a significant impact on how the audience perceives the rest of the story. Furthermore, the idea that Miranda would be threatened by the fancies of her booze-soaked husband really undermines the impression that she's this all-powerful, indefatigable force of nature. Number 4. Cutting Arwen from Helm's Deep – The Lord of the Rings – The Two Towers the Lord of the Rings trilogy was a massively ambitious undertaking for director Peter Jackson, and for even the most organized and confident of filmmakers, a sure editorial nightmare. But Jackson made things worse for himself when he decided to tinker with J.R.R. Tolkien's beloved source material by adding Arwen into the Two Towers Battle of Helm's Deep. Jackson filmed the mammoth action sequence with Arwen playing a significant part in the battle, unlike the novel. And according to the director, he then leaked an image of Liv Tyler at Helm's Deep online to gauge fan reaction. Unsurprisingly, the fan response was near-universally negative, some even dubbing Tyler's heroine Arwen Warrior Princess, a la Xena, of course, prompting Jackson to cut her out of the sequence. If you look closely, though, you can actually see her in the background of a few shots. Now, granted, Jackson's trilogy made a ton of changes from the books, but this one was egregious enough that it could have soured fans on what ultimately turned out to be one of the most spectacular battle scenes ever put to film. Number 3. Cutting Harry's Flashback – In Bruges In Bruges is a masterful black comedy which walks delicately on a tonal tightrope between grim existentialism and absurd surrealism. Writer-director Martin McDonough sensibly cleaved a flashback sequence from the final cut of the film in order to maintain this balance then, which focused on a younger version of antagonist Harry Waters. Though Matt Smith does a great job playing a young Harry, the scene lurches into outright silliness when he walks into a police station with a samurai sword and cuts a cop's head clean off. Even accepting the daft, unfinished visual effects in the home video version of the deleted scene, the violence is just too laughably cartoonish compared to the rest of the film, and would have caused McDonough's nimbly constructed house of cards to tumble. Smith is absolutely believable as a younger Ralph Fiennes, but the scene otherwise doesn't even remotely convince and would have irreparably upended the tone McDonough was shooting for. Number 2. Cutting Homophobic Marty McFly 
Back to the Future. Back to the Future is about as close to perfect as movies get. Its plot is ambitiously yet elegantly structured, it's technically sublime and brilliantly acted to boot. But this was the result of director Robert Zemeckis making pretty much all the right choices along the way, including cutting this iffy dialogue between Marty McFly and Doc Brown. The scene in question sees Marty explaining to Doc his anxieties about hitting on his own mother, particularly that tinkering with the space-time continuum so intimately could could result in him turning gay of all things. Marty says, this is the kind of thing that could screw me up permanently. What if I go back to the future and I end up being gay? It goes without saying that the 80s weren't a particularly sympathetic time for the plight of gay people and this sort of casual homophobia was extremely commonplace in both media and society. And so while countless 80s movies have survived, including casual gay panic, in a movie of Back to the Future's extremely high esteem, it would have placed an ugly asterisk over its brilliance when viewed today. Thankfully, Zemeckis had the good sense to cut the line. Number 1. Cutting Dante's Death – Clerks Kevin Smith's slacker classic Clerks would have become something else entirely if the director kept his original ending. Which saw quick stop clerk Dante shot dead by a robber who then loots the place and runs off into the night. The end. Smith even screened this version of the film at the independent feature film market, though at the behest of friends who watched it there, he decided to cut Dante's death and instead end the movie a minute earlier as Randall leaves the store. Though the dark ending isn't thematically inappropriate, it is an extremely depressing capper to the offbeat comedy, and by Smith's own admission, likely would have resulted in his much-loved viewers universe, today comprising of eight released movies, never coming to fruition. That's our list, but do let us know down in that comment section if you can think of any other movies that you reckon were saved by one single cut. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald. But make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more great lists.